okay um guys welcome back um in today's video we're going to be looking at organic compounds why carbon is always a central atom in all organic compounds an introduction to tetravalence um, of the tetravalence of carbon and of course hybridization now what is organic compounds you might want to ask organic compounds are compounds that contains at least carbon and hydrogen. Now, when they say they contain at least carbon and hydrogen, it simply means that these two carbon, these two atoms must be present for a compound to be termed to be tagged an organic compound. For instance, if I have CH2O, okay, this is an organic compound. If I have C2H5O, this is also an, an organic compound. If I have C2H6, this is an organic compound. But this type of organic compound is called hydrocarbon because in addition, it contains just carbon and hydrogen. Okay, now CO2. Is not an organic compound, but it, if you can see, it contains carbon. In as much as it contains carbon, it doesn't still count as an organic compound because there is no hydrogen. Okay. Now moving forward. Now, just like um, in every compound, must always have a central atom. Okay. Every compound must have a central atom. In organic compounds, carbon is always a central atom in all organic compounds. Carbon is always the central atom. Now, <coughs> why is carbon always a central atom, if you may want to ask? Now, carbon is always a central atom because of its uniqueness known as catenation. Because of its uni uniqueness known as catenation. And what is catenation? Okay, I said carbon is always a central atom because of its uniqueness known as catenation now what is catenation the ability of carbon to form a stable long chain itself and atoms of other elements. Now, oftentimes you see carbon form C, 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 a very long chain, right? This is actually because of the ability of carbon known as catenation. In as much as this chain is very long, it is still very very stable right there is no other compound that can actually exhibit the same property of carbon right the only compound that comes close to this is silicon because it is in the same group like carbon or carbon is the only atom that forms a stable chain a very long chain it's only carbon that you can see that can form c20 c20 c25 etc okay now so take note of that what is catenation? The ability of carbon to form a stable long chain with itself and atoms of other elements. Okay, now let's look at the next um, property of carbon, the travelancy of carbon. The travelancy of carbon. The travelancy of carbon. Now, let's break this down. The travelancy. Now we have tetra and we have valency now tetra means four okay tetra means four and valency this deals with the number of electrons that carbon needs to form a bond okay now carbon needs four electrons to form a covalent bond. 
hence the reason why they said um, the turbulence of carbon. Now, carbon is the only atom, like not only atom, but carbon is an atom such that it can take maximum of four bonds. Anything less than four, carbon will not be stable. Anything greater than four, carbon will not be stable. So carbon takes maximum of four bonds. That is actually what we refer to as the travelancy. All right. So therefore, the characteristics of carbon, by virtue of its ability to form four covalent bond, is what we call the travelancy. Okay. The ability of carbon, the characteristics of carbon, by virtue of its ability to form four covalent bond, is what we call the travelancy. Now, how is this the travelancy? How did we actually come about this travelancy of carbon? Okay, before we actually start talking about it, um, how we came about the travelancy of carbon, let us see how, or let us see the definition of what we mean by the travelancy of carbon. We said, The travelancy of carbon is the characteristics of carbon by virtue of which it forms four covalent bond. Okay, now so this is tetra valency. As the name implies, tetra means four. Valency is actually the, elect the electron intended by an atom to form a bond. Okay, so if you want to break it down, valency is the number of electrons needed by an atom to form a bond. So when they now say tetra, tetra means four. It means that carbon needs four electrons to form a bond. Okay? I believe we've gotten what tetra valency means. All right. Now, how do we form this tetravalency? Now, we're going to quickly look at the electronic configuration of carbon. Okay? Now, we have two forms of electronic configuration. Carbon has... Carbon has... Atomic number equals to 6. Okay? So, therefore, if you want to write the electronic configuration of carbon, we have 1s2... 2s2 and 2p6 now this is the ground state electronic configuration of carbon ground state electron configuration okay now when carbon excites in excited states okay before we act sorry this is not um p6 is actually p2 here is p2 so that if you add it up, 2 plus 6 is 4 plus 2 is 6. Okay. Now, in excited state, but before we move down to excited states, if you actually represent this electronic configuration in terms of the orbital diagram, now this first part is called the SPDF notation, while this box is called the orbital diagram. Now, the two electrons here, if the first electron enters spinning up, the second one enters spinning down, the third enters spinning up, this one enters spinning down. Now, when it gets to P, P orbitals are degenerate. It simply means electron will enter singly first before pairing. Okay? Now, during excitation, remember, when an atom excites, electron moves from a lower energy level to a higher energy level. Now, it is important to note, note that if an atom wants to react, if an atom wants to react, it makes use of only 
the villain shell the villains or outermost shell in a case of um, this carbon how do we know the villain shell when you write electronic configuration now electronic configuration these numbers you're seeing here these numbers this one these two these are the shells you can see that the, the highest number is two which means that carbon has just two shells the first and the second shell all right so if we want to actually undergo if carbon wants to undergo bonding it is this outermost shell that is actually going to undergo the bonding so therefore during excitation i have no business with the inner shell so i'm going to come here and put down this box and then this now during excitation now look at this look at what is going to happen here we have one just look up now during excitation this electron here is going to unpay itself and then enters here okay once it enters here it has created four unpaired electrons in the outermost shell it has created four unpaired electrons in the outermost shell all right now these four unpaired electrons since carbon is a non-metal this four unpaired electron will now receive four electrons from another non-metal to form four, to form four bonds now look at this now let's take off the this side so that can actually understand what we're talking about here so I have this now this was initially the outermost shell of carbon this is a nucleus this is a first shell and the outermost shell let's use this this is the outermost shell in the two S if you notice two electrons in the two edge two electrons are paired and one electrons are unpaired right now this is ground states electronic configuration all right now during excited states now this is what is going to happen during excited states okay during excited states we have this During excited states, now this was initially one here, one here. This place that was two, one of them would unpay itself and now come here, thereby forming half, four half um, one one electrons. Now, if an atom wants to bond, okay, now if an atom wants to bond. Do not forget this is the excited state. If an atom wants to bond, for instance, this is carbon. The four electrons is here. Right? Now, hydrogen, if I bring one hydrogen, hydrogen will bring one electron and drop here. We'll come here, we'll form this. The second hydrogen will come here, drop another electron, and form this. The third hydrogen will come here, drop another electron, and form this. The fourth electron will come here, drop another electron, and form this here by creating four bonds. Okay? So have you seen why carbon is tetravalent in nature? Now this understanding is going to help us understand what hybridization is. Okay, now, so that is that for valency of carbon. Now let's move down to hybridization. Let's move down to hybridization. What is hybridization? Hybridization is a mixing of atomic orbitals to form a hybrid orbital. Okay, I'll say hybridization
is the mixing of atomic orbitals the mixing of atomic orbitals to form a hybrid orbital okay now hybridization is mostly you know can be written for any atoms in a compound Right, hybrid when a relation can be written for any atom in a compound, but most especially it is always written for the central atom. Okay, now in organic chemistry, the central atom is always carbon. All right, so anytime we talk about hybridization in organic chemistry, we are basically referring to hybridization of carbon. All right, so therefore, we now come here to say hybridization. Of carbon okay now carbon has three hybrid orbitals or carbon has three hybridization okay carbon has three hybridization Please, if you're enjoying the video, do well to hit the subscribe button. All right, it gives us courage to do more videos. All right, we are covering the syllables, all of them from the beginning to the end. So make sure you're joining us every evening. All right, to get an update on the video. Carbon has three hybrid hybridization or hybrid orbital. Namely, number one, sp3 hybrid orbital, number two, sp2 hybrid orbital, number three, sp. Now, these various hybrid orbitals, I'm going to be explaining. Remember, we said carbon actually has three hybrid orbitals sp3, sp2, and sp. Now, the big questions you need to understand is that which type of carbon? has sp3 and which type of carbon has sp2 and which other type of carbon has sp now it's actually very simple okay now anytime a carbon has single bonds or two okay let's look at sp3 hybrid orbital let's look at sp3 hybrid orbital let's look at sp3 hybrid orbital so we'll say sp3 hybridization how is this formed if you could recall the excited electronic excited and electronic configuration of carbon recall excited states electronic configuration of carbon of carbon was 1s2 2s1 and 2p3 all right now what do i mean this box remember one electron had to excite and enter um, and enter this other one we have this now look at this we are seeing this box as s and we are seeing this box as p all right remember we said hybridization is a mixing of atomic orbitals to form a hybrid orbital S is an orbital, P is an orbital. But P has three degenerate orbitals. S has one. Now, sp3 hybridization is formed when we mix this 3P and this 1S. When you mix 1S and 3 of this P, you have what we call sp3. Okay? Now, where can we find compounds or carbon with sp3? sp3 carb hybridized carbon are commonly found in number one in fact let's put it this way all single bonded carbons 
uh, sp3 hybridized all single bonded carbon are sp3 hybridized now what do we mean by all single bonded carbons now if you have a compound like this for instance we have c c c c h h h h h h h h now if you notice all these carbons present here all of them all the carbons we have this we have this we have this if you notice they are all single single bonds this is a single bond this is a single bond single bond single bond all of them they have single bonds so all these carbons all of them here they are all sp3 hybridized because they do not have a double bond or triple bond attached to them but instead they have single bonds all through okay now let's look at sp2 hybrid orbital okay let's still use the let's use this sp2 hybrid orbital now this is a mixing of one s and two of the p orbital remember the previous one three of the p orbital was what we combined with the s to form sp3 so when you mix one s and two p you're going to form sp2 now which type of carbons that bears sp2 carbons that bears sp2 hybridization are carbons with a double bond any carbon that you see that bears a double bond are all sp2 hybridized carbon right any carbon that bears sp2 are all any carbon that bears a double bond are all sp2 hybridized carbon all right now let's look oh, we also have carbon doubly bonded to oxygen this carbon is sp2 because it is doubly bonded to oxygen this is alkene and this is carbonyl now please remember I told us that for for sp3 all single bonded carbons are sp3 hybridized now where can we find those kind of carbons in alkanes alkanes are sp3 hybridized now for sp2 where can we find sp2 where can we find sp2 hybridized carbon in alkanes okay now let's look at the last um, hybridized orbital of carbon now we have sp hybrid orbital now This is as a result of mixing 1s and 1p orbital. So s plus p equals sp. s plus p plus p equals sp2. s plus p plus p plus p because sp3 i believe it's clear now okay now where can we find sp hybridized carbon where can we find them we can find sp hybridized carbon in or carbons carbons with triple bond are sp 
hybridized. Example, in our kinds. Example, in our kinds. All right? Now, we have something like this. These are alkynes. We also have a nitrile. Anytime carbon bears a triple bond, that carbon is sp hybridized. All right. So I'm going to give us um, the classes of compounds that contains the various hybridization and examples. Now let's look at this. We have examples. Sp3 commonly found in alkanes. Example of alkanes are ethanes, propanes. As a matter of fact, any compound that ends with ane, A-N-E, 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 is actually the carbons in those compounds are sp3 hybridized. Now, for sp2, they are commonly found in alkenes. Okay, so we have ethene. Any compound that ends with ene contains a double bond. Alkenes contains double bond. Okay, alkene contains single bonds. So any compound that ends with ene contains a double bond, and sp2 is found there. We have propane, and we have sp. Sp we have alkynes all right we have ethyne we have propyne and ethyne alkynes are compound that have